Hello everyone and welcome to Strike Zone with manager George Samus. Strike Zone is a weekly program that gives you, the fans, the opportunity to ask the St. Paul Saints skipper questions about the Saints, baseball or sports, or just life in general. This week we have a special edition for you as we've recorded this just before the Saints will take the field against the Sioux City Explorers in the first round of the American Association playoffs. You had lots of questions this week for the skipper about what the playoffs are going to look like, plus other questions that we're going to find out the skipper's answer to. So let's get right to strike zone. Uh, we want to welcome back manager George Samus this week. Before we get started, I just wanted to mention to fans out there that there were some questions that were asked this week that really weren't as related to the playoffs. And so I'm going to kind of postpone those for right now just because uh, there's a lot of playoff questions we had. So first of all, George, let's just start with some injury and player updates. Pedro Hernandez, is he going to be ready to perform for you in the playoffs? Um, we think um, he threw yesterday, and we'll, we'll make that decision tomorrow morning. Um, he threw yesterday, he felt good, and you know, we, will see, we will see what happens. So we just want to see how he feels today first, but we'll make that decision tomorrow morning. I understand that Angelo Sanko went back home because it looked like his wife was ready to have the baby, but that did not happen. So is he going to be back for the playoffs? We are hoping he will be with us tomorrow. Okay, excellent. So let us get right to our questions for this week. Uh, Ken from St. Paul would like to know, how did you establish your rotation for the playoffs? You know, it was, it was a tough decision because um, of the four guys we have going, we feel – you know, we feel that any one of the four guys could have started game one, and um, I mean to have four guys win you know twelve games. You know that's it's pretty special season by a lot of guys, and, and I think Sioux City's in the same spot too. I mean they could have had three guys start game one. And, um, you know, so it just I just think it's honestly it's in this series, with both teams. There's seven starting pitchers that had great years, and every single one of them could have started game one for any team. Um, but it's just the way it fell in the place. Kramer's going to pitch the first game, followed by Jeff Shields. And then when we get home, Dustin Crenshaw will pitch game three, and Robert Coe will pitch game four. So they were tough decisions. Was there any part in the decision that had to do with the home and away aspect of it? Like Robert Coe's pitched really well at home. Did that kind of factor in or, or not at all? Yes. Yes. No, we could look at that as well, too. And, you know, like I said, they were, they were tough calls. And, um, yeah, but that came into play a little bit. And, um, you know, Kramer's, Kramer's done great all year. Crenshaw's done great all year. And Shields has been excellent all year as well. And and Poe has been excellent most of the season. But, you know, you can say that maybe the home and road thing ha had a little bit to do with it. Our next question is from Mike from Roseville, who would like to know, what do you think are some of the keys for you to beat Sioux City? You know what? They're, they pitch good. They hit good. And, you got to keep their guys off the bases because obviously they can run. They, they're they still second, they're still third, and they put a lot of pressure on you. And you just got to you gotta keep them off the bases. And uh, and when they are on the bases, the pitcher's got to give our catchers a chance to throw them out. You know, they got to be quick to the plate. Jane from Richfield would like to know why the two best teams in the league are facing each other to start the playoffs. You know what? It doesn't really matter because all four teams in the playoffs are excellent, and you're going to have to beat two excellent teams you know, any way you look at it. So it's just, it's a geography thing, but it's okay. You know, if we were playing Wichita first round, if we were playing Laredo first round, all four teams are very, very solid teams. And um, so you're going to have to beat two quality teams, however you look at it. And so that's the way it's going to go. You already elaborated on this a little bit, but Walt from St. Paul would like to know, are you expecting a big, a big pitching duel between the Saints and Explorers in the playoffs? You know what? They, um, yeah, there's there's quality pitchers on both sides, and so you know what? They're quality hitters on both sides too, and they're. Um, I can't even say it's going to be, you know, a pitching duel in the series. I can't even say that because both teams swing the bat so well. Um, I believe we were first and second in um, in both pitching and hitting. I believe, right. and you know that's that just shows you that. <laughs> It's just two solid teams, and uh, you know what? I guess I, I guess if the score was three to two, four to three, or eight to seven, I wouldn't be surprised. It's because there are so many quality players pitching, swinging the bat. So I can honestly say I, I don't know how that's going to play out. But three, two, four, three, eight, seven, twelve, eleven wouldn't surprise me at all. 
Uh, this is one of those pitching series that I gather where every pitch really matters. I, I would suspect. Absolutely, it's um, it's exciting too. This is it's an exciting time, and um, yeah, you better play your best. And I guess whoever makes the less mistakes is going to win. But so again, it's this is very evenly matched. You know, they just run obviously more than we do, um, and we've hit the ball over the fence more than they have. So. There's strengths on both sides, and there really no weak links on either team. Would you personally feel that because of how evenly matched the teams are and the fact that both teams can pitch really well, both teams can score a lot of runs, both teams can hit really well, really the job of you and Steve Montgomery is more magnified than ever, maybe. Is that correct? Yeah, the job of, of him and I is not to mess it up. Just sit there and watch the game. And don't make any stupid decisions. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Billy from Woodbury would like to know, he heard Sean and Rob talking in the series in Wichita that they expected the running game to be more pivotal in the series with Sioux City. Do you, does that mean for you that Argo and Harris have to have big series for you to win, in your opinion? Um, you know, when they when they do, it, it helps. Um, you know, obviously we've added a couple of guys and our lineup's going to be a little bit different, but... Yeah, those two guys. Those two guys can steal bases, and um, and they can steal bases just like their guys can. And um, maybe they have a they have a few more guys that, that can run than we do. But um, our two guys are pretty good at stealing bases as well, too. And you know, get on and go do their thing. Cam from Chaska would like to know from you how it was decided that Sioux City got the two playoff games at home and St. Paul got the final three. You know, I think. Um, no, I'm really not sure exactly how it played out, but I, I think they wanted the first two games, and we wanted the we wanted the last three. So I think that's just the way both teams wanted, and it's just the way it worked out. It was it's good the way it worked out. Larry from St. Paul asks: Is there a speech or something that you say to the team before the playoffs begin? No, I don't even say anything to them. It's these guys from day one have had the right attitude, and they go about their business the right way, and. And they know it's playoff time, and it's exciting, and they're all excited. And even down the stretch, too, it's like, especially with the big crowds this last week, which we've had big crowds all the time, but having the big crowds and, you know, being excited. And the crowds were so loud this last week at home. Um, that kind of put it in the playoff atmosphere as well, too. So um, I don't think I need to say anything to these guys because they're ready. Oliver from St. Paul asks, how do you think the new additions to your team have fit in? I think they have helped. I think they will help us. I think it makes our lineup better. You know, and the thing is, all season long, especially like the last the last month or so, for sure, or the last six weeks, whatever it's been, we haven't even had our lineup out there together because we've, we've had the, all the injuries. And um, but now we do, and we feel our lineups as solid as anybody's. And um, but Ryan Cabin's been excellent since he's been with us for a short period of time, and David Espinosa, too, is, you know, he's been good, and he's been a quality clutch player over the years with many championships, and, um, you know, we think it helps, obviously, with Klosnicka not, not with us anymore. It's, we needed to bring another guy in, and Espinosa will fill in nicely out there, and, and obviously, Kasrowski will not be at the first two games of the playoffs, um, so that's why we went after Ryan Cabin, and we fill our lineup now is as good as it's been all season long. One of the things I would feel that you'd, you'd have to be pretty excited about has been the group of Peacock, um, uh, Zuzalik, Rodaba, and uh, Kevin Cravey have really kind of given you a seventh through ninth inning that you could feel completely confident about. Is that your feeling about this as well? Absolutely, yes. Um, Peacock's pitched better lately. This last couple of weeks, he's pitched better, and Cravey is a nice surprise that, w that we got you know, on the day of the trade that time, and he's come in and thrown the ball well, and and Zizalek and Rodeba have been solid all season long. So, so, you know, there were concerns about our bullpen throughout the season, but we feel now that it's gotten a little bit better, and um, there are some good arms in this series on both teams, and it's good arms, good lineups, um, yeah, as long as the managers don't mess it up, it should be a good series. Mary from Wakone asks you, your pitching staff has been battling some injuries of late. Do you think you're completely healthy now? Yeah, I think we're good now. We, um, you know, we 
we battle through injuries, and so we think we're healthy now, and we're ready to go. Mel from Bloomington wonders from you, how does the season rate in your terms of favorite ones as a manager? It's got to be the best one. I mean, we've had some, we've had some good seasons. And one year we were 61 and 34. Another year up in New Jersey we were 62 and 28, I believe it was. Um, but this year has been unbelievable, and, and to win 74 games is, it's, um, it, it's, you it can't get much better than that. It's been outstanding, and, and I know they feel the same way too, because they have 75 wins, and both teams, the seasons that they've had, it, it's, I don't think you can get any better. It's, it's an unbelievable thing that happened this year in this league. Tom from Egan questions you. He says uh, he knows you don't really like to think too far ahead, but what do you expect from the Laredo Wichita series? Hey, what? Both teams have made changes. We saw Laredo earlier in the season, and we saw Wichita recently. Um, Wichita's lineup's outstanding, and they have a couple of starting pitchers that are that are as good as anybody. Um, you know, and Laredo we saw them earlier in the season, but I know they have some different guys now, and they've been playing well lately. And I think both series are so evenly matched and. And I'll say this to you now, if any one of these four teams wins a championship, I don't think anybody can be surprised, because to me, that's how good all four teams are. Craig from St. Paul heard you talk about two of your players getting thrown out of games earlier in the season, and how you were looking to make it the whole season without that happening. Do you discipline players that are rejected? Um, no, no, we didn't. Maybe we're both talked to, and it just it just doesn't make any sense to get thrown out of games. I, I know it's an emotional game, and sometimes you, your emotions get the best of you. And um, But that's one thing I just don't understand, especially in the baseball world, when guys get thrown out of games, what's the point of doing it? You know, the umpires, they make good calls, they make bad calls, and they make mistakes, and it's the way it goes, and... And sometimes, you know, you just have to just let things go. And um, but I don't think you're going to see any one of our any one of our players get thrown out of the playoff game. It's it's just silly to get thrown out. What's the point of doing it? Especially at this time of the year. Yeah, it's it it doesn't do you any good. What's the point? It's you don't have to agree with calls. You don't have to agree with any of it. It's but you better respect it because you're going to get tossed. And it's. You make, they make mistakes. It's the way it goes, but they make good calls, too. And it's just, there's no point in getting thrown out of the game. Just accept it and move on. Craig also asked from you, he's curious, that is, is it more troubling to you as a manager when the catcher gets ejected just because of the relationship that they're supposed to build with the umpire and how important that is? Yeah, I think so. And it's and especially when you only have one other catcher on the roster, it's, okay, you don't want to... Um, that's a tough one for a guy to get thrown out. He's a tough one to replace. So, yeah, I think um, I think the catchers should, should just keep their cool and stay in the game. A person who identifies himself as anonymous guy wonders why you don't throw batting practice from the mound, but but are a little closer to home plate. Yeah, first of all, because well, one, I'm getting old, and a lot of us <laughs> that throw BP are old, and you know what? The main reason is. Because you want to throw more strikes, and if you're all the way back to the if you want all the way back to the mound, one the velocity is not going to be there, um, and you won't throw enough strikes. So you move up halfway or however close you are, and throw more strikes. If they want the velocity a little bit harder, then you can throw a little bit harder. If they want it slower, you slow it down. It's more about the you know the accuracy and throwing more strikes. I wanted to add to this that I had heard when season ticket holders got to have batting practice there that you threw for three and a half straight hours. That's crazy, that is, one, that is 100% accurate. It was um, it was three plus hours, no doubt. But when you're not throwing that hard, you know, it's 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 not a big deal. You can do it. Um, but 100% accurate, and I enjoy it every minute of it. Look forward to it next year, because we do it every year, so it's... I'm ready for next year, and I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe you know, break some bats next year. That's my goal to break some of the fan bats. <laughs> wow, three and a half hours. That is very impressive. Uh, John from Hopkins uh, points out he heard you talk about at the beginning of the season that you actually expected next season's team to be even better because the talk about the new ballpark would have gotten around more. Do you think that is even possible now that next year's team could be better than this year's? Why not? It's um. <laughs> You know, the, the players, like I said, 
you know, when you're recruiting players and we all go after the same players and we get some and, you know, you lose some. And, but I think once the, now that the players have come in and seen the stadium and come through and seen the big crowds and how wild the atmosphere is and how great it is and the word's going to get around, I, I would think that players, you know, would want to come. And, um, so we're not, you know, after the season we've had, uh, we should have good seasons. We should. We are the St. Paul Saints. We're in a great place, and you know what? We should be. We we should have good seasons, and we should have solid seasons every year. We want eighty wins next year. Okay. You know what? Sure, why not? Let's do it. Johnny from Anoka would like to know if Bill Murray is going to be at the first playoff game. I don't know the answer to that. Um, I hope so, but I really don't know. Thomas from Minneapolis asks, what do you expect C.H. Field to be like for that first playoff game? I hope it was like um, it, it was this last week at home. They were, it was packed. They were loud into the games. A lot of good energy, and that's what we're hoping for. If fans were at Saturday, or let's see, it was Sunday night's game when Ryan Rodebaugh closed out. Uh, when you guys battled back, I'm sorry, when you guys battled back in the ninth yes. inning to win, I mean, that was yep. that was a playoff crowd right there. They were into the entire ninth inning. Like, it, it was incredible. So, You know, it, it's funny. The first 72 games, or 72 wins, you know, we had no walk-offs. Um, and, you know, to get um, two walk-offs in, in the last three games was – was a great thing and exciting and loud and they were into it. We hope it can be like that again. Very impressive. Jeff from Savage uh, heard, hears that it that Amarillo is one of the toughest ballparks to play in. What's the deal with that? Yeah, it is. It's a tough place to play in. Um, but you know, it just you know, the field isn't the best and the lighting is tough. And but I'm sure people can say that about Midway too. Um, over the years, that it was not a good place to play and it's it was just a place to play big twins fan has a couple of questions for you first is do you think the twins can still grab that last playoff spot absolutely it's just a matter of, hey whoever gets hot here down the stretch and um and they've played some good games here lately and they can absolutely 100 percent get in the playoffs and i hope they do do you believe that paul molitor should be manager of the year in the american league you know he should be he's one of the guys that should be in it and um, and you know what's going to happen? At that it's going to depend if they get in the playoffs, and he should deserves it just as much as anybody else does. So he's done an excellent job with them. And um, again, there's a few weeks left in the season, and hopefully they can keep it going and and get in there. And you know, he he deserves to be considered. Jack from Burnsville wonders from you: What was your number one pick for your fantasy football team this year? Um. I'm not a fan of the drafts. I'm a, I do the salary caps leagues. I like those better. So I didn't have a number one pick, and I just to me when you have those drafts, it's it's too fluky. It's like if somebody gets hurt when your your first round draft just gets hurt or something like two weeks into the season, I kind of kind of get burned on that. And I'm a fan of the salary cap leagues that I enjoy. So that's that's the way I go about it. I prefer those leagues myself too. So I'm, I'm with you on that one. Patriots fan has a couple of questions for you. The first one is, Tom Brady won in court, so Super Bowl number five? Why not? He is one outstanding player. That guy is, he is something else. Um, the coach is the best, and they'll be right in there at the end. And um, you, you want players like him, man. He, I love watching him play, and he wants things to go perfect, and he He's so into it, you know, during the games. If things don't go right, he'll let somebody know about it. If he does, doesn't get his job done, you know, he's very emotional, and he loves having guys like that. He's one of the best guys I've, as far as I've ever seen. Going along with that, he also asks you, Tom Brady, the greatest quarterback of all time, right? Yeah. You know what? It's very... If he is, it wouldn't surprise me. He could be at. There's a couple other guys that are right there with him, you know, Joe Montana. And, um, but this guy is something else. He's, what round was he? Wasn't he like a sixth rounder or something? Sixth round, yeah. A high round. Yep. yeah. You know what? What he's gone through and when he's got his chance. And talk about a guy taking advantage of his opportunity. He is one of the greatest players I've ever seen. Yeah, I think that the season that he started playing, too, Drew Bledsoe got hurt, and people were talking about putting Bledsoe back in. Boy, that would have been a bad mistake. So. Yeah. 
good decision by the coach there on that one. Absolutely. Our last question for the week comes from Cowboys Hater, who wants to know why does everyone think Tony Romo is a great quarterback? Uh, one playoff win in like 12 seasons. Come on, ma'am. <laughs> You know what, Tony Romo, I'm not a Cowboys fan at all. I, I, a few years ago, I thought Tony Romo was excellent, and he always made the, you know, he was he was the guy. He was he got um, criticized for, he got criticized too much. So I was on his side, and then the last couple of years, he started throwing those big interceptions in key spots like he always did. So then I jumped off the Romo bandwagon, and I said, all right, you know what, maybe everybody's right. He just, he can't do it. He throws the big interceptions. And then last year, he was outstanding. I don't even remember him throwing a big interception. He, what a great year he had and what a great player he was last year. And um, So he's, um, <laughs> first I thought he was great, then I thought he couldn't do it, and now he's great again. So, um, and again, I don't care for the Cowboys, but he is, he's a special player. And as long as he doesn't throw those interceptions in those key spots. Excellent. Well, George, thank you for joining us this week, and we look for... Saturday night for you guys to be up 2-0. Okay, thank you very much, and um, I I agree with you, and I hope that's the way it works out. All right, enjoy. Thank you. We want to thank manager George Samus for joining us on Strike Zone this week. If you have your own questions you'd like to ask the St. Paul St. Skipper, please send them to us at askgeorge at minorleaguesportsreport.com. That's askgeorge at minorleaguesportsreport.com. Next week, we will be coming to you at the same time, On a Tuesday is when we'll do the recording so that we can air the show Wednesday prior to the American Association Championship Series. We're hoping the Saints wind up taking the uh, first round here against Sioux City, which we're sure there'll be no doubt that they will wind up doing. This is a championship season in St. Paul, and we're excited to see that happen. So we look forward to seeing you next week. I'm Rob Panier, the managing editor of the Minor League Sports Report, and we'll see you next week.